Howdy, howdy, Chris here, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Noise, where we teach you how to build your skill and increase your knowledge about paint and body repair. This is a vehicle here that we've straightened a couple dents on, and today we're going to talk about how to prep it out for paint and how to paint it and clear it. So let's dig in and get started. Also be giving you some masking tips, talk about how to do a spray out card and why we do a spray out card and much, much more. Before we get into talking about paint and clear coat, let's talk about how we prep these panels out for paint. And the first thing we did is we removed any trim that we could. We removed the weather belts, the door handles, the mirror. So if you're doing a project at home, you wanna remove as much trim as possible. If you're uncomfortable removing the trim, just mask it off, but be careful. You wanna make sure it's sanded really well up to that trim so you don't have any peeling clear. The repair we did on this door was in the front section of this door. As a result, when we paint this, we need to blend into the adjacent panels to get a good color match. On the rear part of this door, there's just enough room to get a good color blend so we don't have to blend into the rear door. We'll talk more about that later and why I did that. For the fender and the area around the primer, we need to prep those out for paint blend. How I did that is I used an orbital sander with 600 grit sandpaper, machine sand the large areas, and then went around the edges by hand with a Scotch-Brite scuff pad that's equivalent to like an 800 grit scratch. In some areas, I used a 600 grit foam pad as well. You can sand this by hand if you choose. You don't have to have a machine. You could also wet sand this with 600 grit sandpaper. That's a wet dry paper that you wet the panels down and you can sand it all by hand. Your main focus should be to make sure that all the edges are sanded and all the shine is knocked off these panels for clear coat adhesion. Before we mask this car off, let's talk about the paint I'm using, and then I'll show you how we're gonna do a spray out card to check the color. The paint I'm using today is the Nason XL. Now I've purchased this at my local O'Reilly's, but you may have a paint supplier in your area that can talk to you about what type of paint is gonna work best for you and fit your budget. Nason has a few different lines of paint. One is the Nason Full Base, and one is the Nason XL. The Full Base has a little bit less pigment or tones in the uh, paint so the coverage is not quite as good as the XL so if you want to step up a little bit the XL has better coverage and I find that the color match is really pretty good with Nason. This paint mixes up two to one which is two parts paint one part reducer. Now make sure you're using the correct reducer for the temperature that you're spraying in. This is the clear we'll be using today the Valspar V series Euro clear and the activator. So I've mixed up one part of paint to do the spray out card. And since colors have variances in them, meaning one might be a shade lighter, shade darker, and there might be four or five different variances in one color, we need to do a spray out card to match that color up. Make sure it's blendable. Even though it's not gonna be a perfect color match, we wanna make sure it's close enough that when we do a blend into the adjacent panels that your eye is fooled into thinking it's the exact same color. So what we do is we use one of these spray out cards and what this does, it's gonna help us to match up the color and also it's gonna give us an idea of how many coats of paint we need to cover that primer area. So being that this is checkered, it has light and dark when you spray your coats on. Once it's not transparent, then you know that's how many coats you need to put on before you clear. Okay, so I'm using the 3M gun here. This has exchangeable tips for different sizes. I'm gonna use the 1.2 tip. We're gonna slide it in here. Now it's locked in. These are easy to clean. Uh, this, is a, this is a very good gun for DIYers. Uh, you can use it for primer, you can use it for base, all because no paint goes through the gun itself, it all goes through the tip, and you can exchange these tips for different sizes, for different applications, and it sprays really well. I would definitely recommend this, and it's not super expensive. It's not $700. I think it runs around three, somewhere between three and 350. Not too bad for a quality professional gun. I taped a paint stick to the spray out card and I put one coat of base on it. I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll add another coat and see where we're at. You can see how it's still transparent, so we'll add a second coat and take a look at that. It's starting to get coverage and you can still see the squares. So we're gonna flat, let this flash off and put a third coat on. 
After we put the third coat on, I can see that this is totally covered, which is perfect. We'll put three to four coats on this repair. Now let's check it up against the vehicle. So I wiped down the car so we have a clean surface to check it against. And I'm going to lay it up there and just kind of look at the way that that color and those metallics are flopping. And I can see right off the bat that this is a really good color match. I'll spray a little wax and grease remover on it. This is going to make it shiny and imitate clear coat. So we'll have a good look at what it's going to look like after it's cleared. I'm really happy with this paint color. I don't think we could have got it any closer. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's perfect for a blend. Before we start masking, we want to clean these panels again with wax and grease remover. That's going to remove any contaminants. We're also going to clean the jams because we need to mask those off before we tape the exterior. So I'll spray down the jams and wipe those clean so the masking tape will adhere properly. And then we'll spray the rest of this panel, get it nice and clean before we start applying our tape. So as we get ready to tape off this jam, I want to mention something to you. So when you're sanding these edges, you want to make sure you're sanding just around the edge enough so clear can wrap around that edge just a little bit and still adhere, okay? So by sanding this edge, Around the edge just a little bit, you get proper adhesion of the clear coat. It's good to have a variety of different sizes of tape. This is an inch and a half and a three quarter. We're going to use both of these on this masking job, but I'm going to use the inch and a half here, and we're going to run a piece of tape along the inside edge of this door, and we're going to let it hang over about an inch, and then when we shut this door, it's going to overlap that rear door, and then we'll be able to mask it off easy. It's going to keep overspray from going in that jam and creating issues. I put another layer of the inch and a half tape down over the three quarter and this is just going to build it up, help hold it down and then protect it when we go to cut out the plastic. Now this car has been blown out so we've blown out all the cracks, all the jams, all the areas that are going to hide dirt, okay? So you want to blow those out with some air, get those all clean. You don't want anything blowing out of those cracks when you're painting. That's going to get into your paint job and ruin it tape up this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a piece of tape right on that edge. This is covered by the weather belt and we're going to fold it over to the glass to keep air from blowing down in there and causing dust possibly to come out. This big gap here, I'll show you what I like to do. I take a piece of inch and a half or two inch tape and I like to slide it down in there. So you, if you get this right, you can work this in there and then fold it over. Now, sometimes it makes it a little bit more difficult to untape it, but I don't press it down in there. I'm just letting it sit in there. I'm pressing it down on the top so it's, it's up against this fender inside that jam. What I'm going to use to mask off this fender is some foam tape. Foam tape has an adhesive edge that we can lay right in that jam of that fender, and then we'll be able to shut the hood on it. This is going to create a tight seal, so no overspray will get under that hood, or no unwanted air that's going to blow out any dust or contaminants. It'll also leave a soft edge of clear on the edge of that fender. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I use, check out my storefront. I left the link in the description. I lay a piece of tape over the front edge on the headlight of that fender and then we'll shut the hood and we'll get a good look at the foam tape and how it seals off that jam. For this particular job, we're going to go ahead and mask off the headlight and the bumper cover and then we'll continue on masking the rest of this vehicle. I'm masking off Underneath where the wheel opening molding goes, we're covering the holes that are in that panel, and then we'll mask off the edge of that door. And now we have a nice perimeter to run our plastic over the entire vehicle, and then we'll cut out the areas that we're painting. It's a good idea to pull your plastic as tight as possible and get those wrinkles out anywhere that's going to hold any dust or debris that's in the air. So now I've got my plastic nice and tight. You want it to be as tight as possible. 
that eliminates this plastic from blowing around and maybe creating some dust. So I'm gonna tape down the corner, pull it back and tape it down on both ends. And then we'll cut out the area that we're painting. Now I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna cut out the area that we're painting. We're gonna carefully run along the taped areas and cut that out, being sure not to press down too hard because you don't wanna scratch the paint underneath that tape. For the door handle openings, I like to use foam tape. I'll just flip it over sticky to sticky, and then I'll fold it up until it's large enough, and then I'll stuff it in there and get a nice tight seal so no overspray or air goes in those openings. Okay, now we're ready to paint. I've got the uh, infrared heater just warming up the panel just a little bit before I spray the first coat of base on. Now you could use a sealer to cover this primer. This color is a little transparent, but it's not a bright blue that's very transparent. It's a darker blue and it's not too transparent. As you saw with the spray out, it's gonna take three coats of paint to cover it. That's all I'm really concerned about. I know I finished this very well with 600 grit. Um, sealer does a couple things. It'll fill any minor scratches. It'll create a good base for the new base coat. It'll also, help with coverage. So I'm not really that concerned about using sealer on this job for a couple reasons. I'm blending into this, I'm blending this edge of this door and there's not a lot of room to blend. If I use a sealer, there's gonna be even less room to blend. So I need to be very careful on this door. Now it is a very good color match, but I, can't, I don't wanna get color out to the edge of that door. So I don't wanna use sealer in this instance. And it's gonna be perfectly fine to not use sealer. Be sure to tack off the surface just before you spray. We're gonna wad it up kind of like a bird's nest and then we're gonna lightly wipe down the entire surface of this repair. Make sure as you're tack ragging, you're checking everything out, making sure that there's nothing you need to correct before you paint. Perfect example, as I was tacking off the vehicle, I noticed there's a couple areas I did not tape down the plastic. Okay, so let's do one last check. Make sure all our tape is Tape down and secure. Everything looks good. So let's put our first coat of base on this aspirator. So let's put that on. We'll put a medium coat of paint over the primered areas only. We're not going to be concerned about a blend at this point. We want to use multiple layers of paint to cover the primer first. The second coat of base, we're going to put it on a little bit heavier. I, I do have this 3M gun set wide open at 20 PSI on the air pressure. After the second coat of base, you can see we're starting to get good coverage. We're going to let this flash off for about 10 minutes in between coats. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to put my heat lamp on it, help that to cure just a little bit quicker. Now I'm going to apply the third coat of base and we're going to start to blend out past the repair area about two to three inches. Remember when applying your base, it's important to get into the habit of overlapping 70%. So if you're spraying metallics, you're going to get a nice uniform finish with those metallics. So now I'm going to do a little drop coat right on the edge of this door where we are doing the blend. Now you don't want to get too far away from the panel when you do your drop coat. Spray it just like you normally would. I do in a little bit of a diagonal pattern from the top down and then from the bottom up in a diagonal. And that'll give you a nice uniform finish on your metallics and your base. You can see I didn't get my blend out to the edge of that door. You can see there's a little chip there that's not covered with paint. I blended it right in there and this was a good enough color match that I could do a real tight blend on this and not have an issue. We do want to touch up these chips before we clear coat. So we're going to take a little paint and a paint dauber and just lightly touch up those chips on the edge of this door. 
We'll take a good look at it one more time, making sure there's no imperfections or particles of dust that we need to take care of before we lay down some clear. The first coat of clear, we're gonna lay down a good medium coat. I've got my fan pattern set wide open. I've got my volume at two and a half turns out from closed. And the air pressure we're using with this 3M gun is 24 PSI. Now your settings may be a little bit different depending on the gun that you're using. When you spray clear, you want to be three to five inches away. You want to overlap 70% on your passes. You want to have a nice consistent speed and a nice consistent distance from the panel. That's going to give you a nice uniform finish on your clear coat. On my second coat of clear, I like to slow down just a little bit. I like to use a light source to evaluate how that clear is laying on the panel. I want a nice slick finish. So if I see that it's not laying down the way I want. I make adjustments to correct it. There are just so many different ways you can make adjustments to your clear coat while you're spraying. You can use your speed. You can use your distance from the panel. You can use your gun settings. You can turn up your volume. You can turn down your volume or up your air pressure. All those things are going to change the way that clear coat lays on that panel. So what I would say is just have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously. Practice and experiment with it and that'll give you the confidence you need to make the right adjustment for you and make you a better painter this repair is looking great let's pull it outside take a look at the before and after and the finished product i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and if you did leave me a comment down below and tap that like button and if you want to support the channel check out how you can down in the description below now let's take a look at the before and after. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Garage Noise.